All right, thank you everyone. Um, going to talk today a little bit about uh, what are we doing with artificial intelligence uh, in our vehicle. Um, I uh, run the engineering team at our office in Sunnyvale in Silicon Valley in California. And uh, we have a group of engineers working heavily on artificial intelligence. And today I want to share with you some of, uh, some of the work we've been doing. So uh, um, let's jump in and maybe define a little bit what we mean um, by intelligence in the vehicle. Um, and maybe the first thing we need to talk about is the contextual user experience. Um, how you interact with users. Um, so that's the first area. And this is a very, uh, very simplified view of intelligence. Intelligence will come in every single machine that we will have in the future, including the car. But I tried to categorize it in, in very simple areas um, to share this with you. The second thing is autonomous driving, of course, um, and how you interact with the environment around you. Um, and then the third one is big data and how the system interacts with business around there, uh, try to understand user patterns and user behaviors. Um, we'll focus today on contextual user experience, uh, which is basically how the system interacts with users, users inside the car, users outside the car, um, but in general, um, how we provide intelligence to this interaction is much easier and simplified. So, um, I put this definition here, um, just as our own definitions that we work with, but you will find tons of different definitions out there. The one that we work with is that um, contextual user experience basically is, is the art of using artificial intelligent technologies. Um, one of them is machine learning um, to actually simplify the user experience, simplify it and personalize it. Uh, that is our goal, um, because you are driving and we want this to be uh, not just intuitive, but extremely simple uh, and, uh, and intelligent. Um, and by doing that, or through the process of doing that, you want to come to a point where the system creates this trust with the user, uh, so you can actually start executing and automating some of these actions for the user. So that's our goal that, that we define for ourselves. I'm going to focus a little bit on these two uh, squares, the, the, the contextual UX a little bit, talk about what, what the steps were taken to execute that, and maybe some about machine learning. Um, contextual UX in, in the very, very simple format is uh, we observe the user behavior, uh, we train the system um, to create profiles and patterns, um, and then we predict what the user is going to do next. So that's a very simple way of providing intelligence in user experience. Um, in machine learning, um, traditionally, when I was still studying, we'll, we've been taught that uh, you write a computer program, so you input data and you get the output. That's a traditional way of doing that. Um, by the time I got my graduate study, we started learning that there is a better way of doing this. Um, the way that we all interact with the environment around us. We watch certain behavior and then we try to model it in our mind. Um, one of the things uh, you can imagine is that if you watch this room for a while and see how many people come in and get out, maybe you can predict an hour from now how the how the interaction will happen or how, how many people can, can leave this room. So the idea is that uh, by, by having input and output, you train the computer to figure out the relationship between those. Train the computer to create the program itself. So that's machine learning in its simplest format. So you let the machine create the program. You don't create the program for the machine. So why machine learning is popular? Probably hearing about it everywhere in the news nowadays, artificial intelligence, machine learning. It is popular because we have tons of data. Every one of you today has a smartphone probably or just a normal feature phone, collects tons of data. Um, the car has hundreds of sensors. Um, every device around us um, has sensors, collecting data, storing data. Um, there is abundance amount of data around us. And um, this data gives us a huge opportunity to look at them, try to figure out the pattern, like, try to figure out the relationship between different things within this data set. But we have a huge number of data that gives us the opportunity for the first time to actually create some intelligence. The second thing is the speed. And speed here is just, is just a word for um, how powerful computers are today. 
um, it is the number of uh, processors, the number of um, the memory size, the interaction, but computers today are, as you all know, extremely powerful relatively uh, compared to a few years ago. Um, and that gives us opportunity also to try different things with the computer and let the computer figure out the relationships and patterns. Um, then the last thing is algorithms. Um, machine learning and artificial intelligence is an old field. It's not a new one. Maybe some of us are hearing about it recently, but it's been around for years and years. And in the last 30, 40 years, uh, lots of smart, intelligent people um, spend a huge amount of time developing algorithms. Um, and, um, and because of that, we today have lots of tools at our disposal that we can use to actually better understand the data and model the data. So these are the three things that made um, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning very popular and actually practical uh, in, in recent years. So if we look at uh, my field, our field that we are all here for, which is automotive, and try to understand a little bit how does, um, how does this apply to our, our area. Um, so in, in contextual user experience, which is our focus today, um, we kind of give for ourselves two goals. Um, very simple goals, very difficult to achieve, of course, uh, but they are very simple. The first one is um, to simplify uh, the buttons and the interaction elements within the car, to really simplify that. And the problem that we have, um, you all have cars, you all interacted with the user, with the user interaction elements in the car. Um, the problem we have is that there is always need for more. More features, more data, uh, more things that you want to do as you are driving. And um, if you just take one experience, let's take an experience of listening to music. Um, if, if you go and look back in the years, you had an AM, FM radio, uh, maybe even some of them had like five stations, that's all what you can. These are all the choices that you can, you can have. And today, if you want to listen to music, you have AM, FM, XM, HD radio, um, you have probably Spotify, maybe you have maybe Pandora, maybe you have internet radio, uh, maybe you have your connected iPhone or, or, or Android phone that has streaming, uh, maybe you have an S SD card, maybe you plug the USB, uh, maybe dongle, you have tons of ways of, of getting music in the car, and somehow we need to provide an interface that will let you, while you are driving, focusing on the road in front of you, select the music that you like. Um, so this is a challenge. This is a challenge in every single area that we have, is the number of features um, uh, is exploding in the car, and we need somehow to manage this. And machine learning can come to help us with this today um, by providing first a personalized experience. Uh, everybody's different. Uh, I might prefer um, Spotify, you might prefer XM radio. And if that is the case, then the first choice on the screen should be different for, both, for each one of us. Um, and things like that, people are different, people are using the car differently, and if we actually understand how they use the car, then we can personalize this experience. The other thing that we can do is to watch the pattern of usage. Um, people are, to a certain degree, predictable. Um, if maybe many of us come in the, every, like on Monday, you come on Monday morning at seven o'clock, 7.30 maybe, you get in the car, you check the traffic to work, um, you start driving, um, you turn on uh, the news, um, and then maybe after some time you make a couple of phone calls to your colleagues at work to, to set up the day, um, and that's pretty much what you do every Monday. If, so if you keep doing that every Monday, then why do you need to search for all these functions every Monday? Why do you need to search for traffic and you need to search for uh, the, the news program and, and all of these things? Why do you need to do that? Why can't the car do this for you? Um, and if, if the car is 100% certain that it's Monday morning, it's 7.30, it is you, then these actions can actually be automated for you even. Um, and then your experience will be much more simplified and personalized. And if one day you give the car to your kids, your wife, significant other, then they will get their own experience, which is completely different from yours. So that is the goal here. That's what we are doing here in this, in this work. Um, the second thing is, um, as many of, of people are discussing today, um, you are not driving one car. Uh, many of us have one or two cars, uh, but also many of us are using different cars. 
um, you rent a car, you share a car, um, you use some different ways um, of transportation. So can, can it one day, is it possible one day that we actually have your profile and your pattern follow you um, if you would like it to? Um, so if you get to a rental car, maybe all of a sudden you can just all of a sudden have your profile in that car and you don't have to customize and personalize this car anymore. And we are not talking about just infotainment or entertainment. We're talking about everything. How do you like your seats? How do you like your sunroof? How do you like your windows? How do you like your air condition? All of this as a holistic experience in the car, all of this is your own profile, your own preferences. And it should be, we should be able to take that with us as customers from, from one car to the other. So um, in general, when we talk about contextual intelligence, um, it is to help us with multiple things like um, simplify complex tasks. Um, uh, and, and the simplest tasks that you might have on your smartphone, just selecting music, as you are driving, that could be very quickly a complex task if you have 20 different ways of selecting music. Um, so things as you are driving become very complex very quickly because your focus and attention should be on the road. Um, and you don't have much time to fumble around with the, with the devices around you. Um, just another very simple example of trying to f find a phone call for your next meeting, for example. You have a meeting, you have a conference call, you're driving, you got stuck in traffic, now you need to find that conference call, find the phone number, dial it, jump in. All of these things that you need to do, are, they seem very easy if you're just sitting in front of your phone, um, but once you are driving, they become extremely complex. Um, the second thing, of course, is the dynamic behavior. Um, and as I said, people do different things in different days. Uh, on my weekend, I don't go to work. I don't check the traffic. I don't need the interface in front of me in the car to show me that. So I want the car to be smart enough to understand that on the weekend, I do different things um, compared to weekday. If I have my kids with me in the car, I want the car to understand that and understand that now I have to drop them to school. Uh, so there are lots of things um, that, that changes in the car, uh, depending on how you use the car, depending on the con contextual uh, environment in the car. And, um, and the car should be able to do that, to, to understand that and to provide that experience to the user. Um, then personalization. Um, my interface, my user interface, should be different from yours, should be different from somebody else, even if we all use the same car. Um, so that's a very important um, goal. I want to jump to maybe one of the practical user, well, just an example. Um, the example that I picked up today to talk to you about is an application that we already released. We released last year. It's called Companion App. And um, the idea here, you don't have to read all of this. The idea is very simple. Um, driving um, or navigation experience does not start in the car. Uh, we all have this frustration. We get in the car, and now we have to input the destination. And you have it printed somewhere, or you have it your email or somewhere else. But um, we know where we're going before we actually get to the car. All of you here know where you're going after you finish this meeting or after you finish this conference. Um, so we thought maybe it's a simpler thing um, to use wearables a little bit with that experience. So um, the, the, the companion app that we developed here basically is that you just uh, talk to your watch, uh, Apple Watch. We got together with Apple and we developed this. You tell it, okay, well, I want to go to Marriott at Providence Way. And that's it. That's all what you need to do. Um, the watch will give you walking direction to your car. So the watch knows where your car is. will give you walking direction to your car. You get in the car. You don't do anything. The destination will show on the dash, on the navigation system inside the car. You start driving. You get out of the car. You park somewhere. You get out of the car. Then the final destination to your final door, come back to the watch and give you walking direction to your final door. So we call it door-to-door -door navigation. Um, so it simplifies for you the destination entry process, but also it simplifies for you how you reach your final destination through multiple ways, walking, driving, walking again. Um, and then once we did that and we released it, we thought about why do I have to tell the watch where I'm going? Um, uh, why do I have to tell that the system, the watch, the phone, the car, where I'm going? Um, that system should know that. I'm using that system every day. After a few days, it should start understanding my pattern. Um, so we added the machine learning into this and we added prediction. And basically, every time you look at the watch, it will tell you, I think you're going to this place. 
and then you can say yes, and it goes from there. It gives you three options with certain, uh, of course, confidence, and you can choose the one that you're going to, and in most cases, it is the right one. So how did we do that? Uh, we did that, again, with this, um, with this cycle. We observe, we train, and we predict. So um, as you're driving to a certain location, we look at where you started from, where you're going, um, the, the, the world around you, what was the temperature, what was uh, maybe um, the, the time of the day, all, all these intelligent, all this kind of, of sensor data that we can collect provide us a way to intelligently decide the, the context of that behavior that you decided to take. Um, and then we train the system, we use machine learning to train the system, create patterns for that user in that context, in that environment. And then we predict after that. So as we have these patterns, next time at 8.30 or 7.30, if you get in the car, we understand now your pattern. We understand what you are going to do. So that's how we provided uh, the prediction piece of it. Um, but it's not only about prediction. It's not only about machine learning. Some of the intelligence actually can be provided by simple other ways, um, like calendar, for example. Um, if we can access your calendar, and if you have your meetings and plans in your calendar, then that also can come into this whole experience. So it's not only that I watch your patterns and I understand what you're doing, but I also see from your calendar that you have a meeting in an hour from now, and then I can look at it, look at the traffic um, environment around you, and I can tell you that you need to leave now uh, in order to catch up your appointment because the traffic is bad. So this is another way of providing intelligence. At the end, the experience of the user is every time I look at the car, or I look at the watch, or I look at the phone, I get exactly what I'm planning to do and the best advice to do it, or how to do it. Um, so this is just one app, just one product that we released. Um, where do we go from here, and what we're going to do next um, is a question. Um, and um, one thing that we thought about very heavily is that that experience, that intelligence, have to stay, has to stay in the car. Um, and it's, it's important because sometimes you're not connected. You, everybody's talking about the cloud and the features from the cloud. Of course, if I'm connected, I can access more data. I can get more information about the user. But in reality, if I'm not connected, that experience is still extremely important that it has to be embedded in the car. So this intelligence and algorithm need to stay in the car. Um, so with, it has to work without connectivity. Um, and as it is in the car, I have hundreds of sensors in the car I can access and collect this data. Um, it has to also take care of data, user privacy. So user own this data, own this profile, and that profile is not shared with anybody else. And user has full control of that profile and this data that's, that, that's collected. Um, car has, of course, very powerful computers, as you all know. Um, and because of that, we can run these analytics and these um, algorithms inside the car. Um, but something also important is, as I said, it's not just infotainment and entertainment experience. It's the holistic experience of the car. It's how you drive the car. How do you take your curves? How, how do you stop? Do you stop early in the traffic light or you wait until the last second and stop? All of this experience that you have in the car, it's a pattern. It's a, it's a profile of how you actually drive the car. So moving forward, I will leave you with these words from our chairman. Um, that's Dr. Dieter Zatsche, the chairman of, of Daimler. And uh, he's basically saying that the car is evolving into becoming a digital companion. It understands everything about you, and it kind of interacts with you as a, as a good old friend, more or less. So um, this is our goal, and that's what we're driving to. Thank you very much.